Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to create a static background parallax effect for your Squarespace website. Okay, so first off, this is just for the Brian family of templates. I'll leave a list below in the description of all the other little Brian's that stem from the big Brian template. And also, this is a little bit hacky. Well, when I say hacky, we'll have to pay a bit of attention to the size of the images that we're uploading. And also, it's not, it's not the best on mobile, but I'll show you something different that we can do with that later on in the video. Okay, so we've got our homepage with um, some fictional content in it. If we come across to pages, you see that this is an index page with four sub pages contained within the index. You can have as many or as little as you want. In this, I'm just using four as an example. I've also got no banners uploaded to any of the pages. And also if I come across to style editor, so design, style editor, and then scroll down to index page. I've got apply minimum height to all pages. Now, once again, this is optional depending on your site. I'm just using this as an example. So if we just come back to the main menu. Okay, so the next thing I need to mention is the images that we're going to be uploading. So I'm using these three images. Um, if I just double click on one. Okay, so this is 2600 pixels across the longest edge and 1600 in height. Now this isn't an ideal size really for images that we're uploading to a page, but uh, we need it to be big to cover bigger screen sizes. Um, this one's coming out at just under a meg, which isn't too bad for the size of the image. So I'm just going to close that off for a second. And we're going to upload these next to the, the custom CSS. So to do that, we go to design and we go to custom CSS. And then I'm just going to go to manage custom files. And then we want to add our images in. So we have to do this one by one. Okay, so I'm finished with that for now. Um, if we just come back to our pages section, and I want to get the URL slugs of all the pages that I'm going to add, be adding the images to. So if we just get a text editor, and just make a note of the URL slugs that we're getting. So we want, we want to get this welcome. So we'll just copy that, put it into the text editor, and then cancel. And then we do the same for the next three or the next couple of pages that we want to get. So we've got break. Paste that in there, cancel. And then the same for the last one that we want to put the image into. So our story. Okay, so I'll just minimize that for a minute. We'll come back to them as well in a second. Okay, now that we've uploaded our images and we've got our URL slugs, next we want to make the magic happen. We want to make the images appear in this background and we want them to stay still. So if we come to Design, Custom CSS again, and then I'm going to open this in a new window so we've got a bit of space to work with. Okay, first line, line one, we want to put dot collection hyphen type hyphen index. Then we want to put a hashtag and then we want to get the URL slug of the first page that we're going to put the image behind. So we just copy, just minimize that and then just paste it by this hashtag. Then we want to put squiggly brackets, Squarespace puts the second one in. So we'll just drop this down a line, give us a bit of space to work with again. Next I'm going to go background hyphen image colon and then we want to put url some normal brackets squarespace puts the second one in and then we want to put some quotation marks and once again squarespace puts the two quotation marks in so the quotation marks need to be contained within the normal brackets then i'm going to put a semicolon come down the line we want to go background hyphen attachment colon and for this, we want to put fixed. Now, this is the piece of CSS that makes the images stay still. Next, we want to go background hyphen size. 
colon, cover, semicolon. And then this last one, it's not really necessary, but I've just put it in anyway to make sure we don't get any repeating. So we just go background, hyphen, repeat, and then we want to put no hyphen repeat. Okay, so that's it for now. What we need to do now is to put the URL of the image in that we've just uploaded. So if we just click in between these two quotation marks and we come back to manage custom files, and then we just click the image that we want to put into our first index page. There we go, our image is in there now. So what we can do is just copy all this block of code, come down a couple of lines, paste it back in. We can just take this URL slug out and put the URL slug of the next page that we want to put the image in. And we can also just swap this URL out. So we, the next page we want to put in, we want to put this second image in. So we just click within them quotation marks again. And then we grab the URL slug of the next page that we want to put the image behind. So if we just copy. And then once again for the third page, just repeat the process. And then just hit save. And then we'll close the CSS editor down. And there we go. We've got our parallax static background thing going on. So you'll notice that this text is dark, which isn't ideal on this page because the image is dark as well. Um, if we scroll down, you can't even see the text on the other pages. This is because we haven't uploaded the banner to the page, so we're not getting the image overlay text color, which we would normally set in the style editor. Not to worry, there's a couple of ways we can fix this. The easiest one is to go to banner and you could just upload the blank image. That would then change the color to of the text to the image overlay color. The next way of doing it is to get your content. Just going to copy that. And then I'm going to put in a code block. And I'm going to go angle bracket h1 style equals quotation mark color colon I'm gonna go white and then another quotation mark another angle bracket Squarespace puts a second one in and then let me just come down the line just gonna paste the content in we're gonna get this best pizza in the world which was our h1 so there we go changes the text to white same for this one now I'm just gonna put P let's copy this style color white and the angle bracket paste that in there let's put the close and p at the bottom of the paragraph we're just going to go so there we go the text white um we can just delete our other text block we can come down then and just repeat that step on the next pages which i'll do quickly now <laughs> Okay, so there we go. I've changed all the colour of the text now. It's looking pretty sweet, I'd say. But as I did mention earlier on in the video, in the intro, it's not the best on mobile. If we go to Tableau View, you know, it's it's not too bad. Um, it depends if you can live with your images cropped, then that's great. There's nothing more you can do. If we just go to the mobile view, you can see it's quite heavily cropped. So the way we can fix this is to hide these pages on mobile and then just set them up as a normal page with normal parallax scrolling, um, which we can hide on desktop then. So to do this, we just basically go to custom CSS. Let's open in a new window again, just to give us a bit of space. We want to come down a couple of lines and we're going to use media query to, to hide these pages. So if we just go at media, space only space screen and normal brackets we want to go max hyphen width colon I'm just going to set this at 660px and then come outside of the brackets we want to put a squiggly bracket squarespace again puts the close one in which is handy and we want to go dot 
collection type again. Hyphen type hyphen index hashtag and then we want to put the URL slug of the pages that we want to, that we're going to be adding so it's these it's these ones from the top so if we just go copy welcome put a comma copy hashtag break just paste that in there another comma and then our story just copy that, paste that in at the bottom. And then we want to put another squiggly bracket. And then we want to put display colon none. And then we'll save. Shut that down. Let's go back to mobile view. So there we go. You can see that them pages aren't there now on mobile. So what we can do is come back to our pages. We'll go to our welcome page. We're going to duplicate this. And we'll call this welcome mobile. And then we're just going to drag this up into our index that we're using. Let's go back to desktop view. And you can see this is our new duplicated page, which doesn't have a background attached to it. So I'm not going to go too much into the styling of this page, but what you can do is add a banner. If you need to change the text color, you could put a text block into there. But basically what I want to do is hide this one now on desktop so we can put a background image in and make it, you know, a bit nicer looking on mobile. So what I need to do is to grab the URL slug of this page, which is welcome-mobile. So I'm not going to copy that. I'm just going to make a note of that one. And then we'll come back to custom CSS. Just open this in the new window again. Let's... Um, Come down, I'm just going to copy this piece of CSS that we use to hide the pages on the mobile. I'm just going to come down another couple of lines, paste that in. And I just want to change max width to min. So min width. And then I want to put hashtag welcome hyphen mobile. And save. Close that down. So when we go to desktop view now, you'll see that that page is not there, but it is visible on mobile. So it needs all the style and applying to it, which I'm not going to go into at the moment because the video will go on for about three hours, maybe. So that's how we hack our way around static parallax in Squarespace. It'd be nice if there was a button in the style editor to just turn the effect on and off, but there isn't, so... So I hope you found this video useful. If you're planning to use this effect in your site, leave us a link in the description. In the description. Comments. So I hope you found this video useful. If you're planning on using this in your site, leave us a link in the comments below. I'd love to see how you guys are using the effect on your site. And thanks for watching. Um, if you're not already, please do subscribe for more tutorials like this. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. See ya.